Now it's time for another Board Game Brawl preview with Nick Meanahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey now, my name is Nick, this is Board Game Brawl, and today we're going to be taking a look at a game that is currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. That game is called Gamora Downtown, and it's from Storyception Games. Now, if you like what you see throughout the rest of this preview video, I'm going to encourage you to go to the official Kickstarter project page for Gamora. There's going to be a link at the bottom of your screen, now and at the end of the video, and also down in the description section of the video. That will take you to the project page, find out more information, and hopefully consider backing the project. Now Storyception Games is a company of 10 people who are very creatively driven and thematically driven. They produce games like Galactic Arena and Gothic Invasion and you're seeing their talents at work here, those same talents that they brought to bear for those two games here in Gomorrah Downtown. This is a competitive game where, where although it can be played in teams where each player takes control of a detective or two in this really dark world very reminiscent of the Sin City comic book and movies. You are trying to investigate particular cases by rounding up suspects and using witnesses. At the same time, the other players are doing the same thing, and it's a very cutthroat world. You may and probably want to kill the other investigators just to keep them out of your way. Let's go ahead and take a brief look at how the game is played along with the expansion. Then we're going to come back and I'll let you know my final thoughts. Okay, I'm going to give you a very brief overview of Gamora Downtown, but obviously the first thing I want to point out is that this is a prototype version of the game. Hence the reason you see a lot of the cards have uh, the same white backs and they don't have distinct backs. Um, I just know what everything is by heart. But uh, this is just to give you a taste of what the gameplay is going to be like. The final version of the game is going to have high quality cards with a bunch of different and original art. I just wanted to run you through this, give you a taste for the gameplay, and then you can look at the Kickstarter page and look at all the artwork and uh, decide for yourself. Now, uh, the goal of Gamora Downtown is to get victory points. The first person to get to three victory points is going to be the winner of the game. Alternatively, the game can end if you are the last detective left standing. If everyone else is dead, all their detectives are dead, you are going to win the game. Now at the beginning of Gamora, every player is going to get two detective cards. You're going to have one that you're going to put face up right away, then you're going to have one that is your reserve character. So if your first detective gets killed, your second one comes into play. You lose all of your uh, cards that were in hand, but you still have your case and your clues, which I'll get back to in a second. Now the way you get to detectives, you can do either strategically by doing a card draft, or you can just shuffle them up and deal them out randomly. It's entirely up to you. So just to give you a, uh, a closer look at some of the detective cards and what they entail. So here's Sonya's card. You have the artwork and the name. Up in the top corner, you have their hit points. This is how many hits you can take before you are dead. If you ever go down to zero, this detective dies, and you have to go to your backup. If you don't have a backup anymore, you're out of the game. Uh, you have two different abilities, every detective. Uh, the first is a constant trait that's always on when it applies. So Sonya's is that your opponent cannot look into your hand and case. The uh, second ability that has a gold star next to it is a special ability that's only usable once per game. Sonia's is that during your turn, you can steal two cards at random from a detective's hand, and that will end your turn. Then you have, uh, just to show you a couple more examples, you have Mark. Mark also has four hit points. The first time you lose life during a turn, you draw a card. And his uh, once per game ability, store a clue at any time. And the last one I'll show you is Vanessa. Uh, Vanessa has four hit points, and... Uh, before the start of your turn, you may look at the top card of the deck, and then you may discard it, the action card deck. Her once per game ability, when there are no cards left in the deck, gain one victory point. Now, I mentioned before that uh, one of the ways to win the game is to get as many victory points as possible, probably the more likely way to win the game. And you can get those in two different ways. For every detective that you kill, you get a victory point, but also through cases. Every player is going to get one case that they keep face down in front of them, and if you solve the case, you get to take another one from the stack until those are all gone. Uh, but if you are successfully solve a case, that's two victory points. So that can easily get you on your way to victory. Two cases or three detectives, however you want to do it, any combination or one case and one detective uh, to get to that three. But this is definitely one option that you have. And so let's take a look at this. You have um, anonymous hit. Uh, this one is, uh, these are the clues that you need. So there are clue cards in the game, which are part of the action deck. And they will have these different symbols on them. During your turn, you're gonna be able to store clues underneath, and I'll explain this more in a moment, but you'll be able to store uh, clues underneath 
this uh, case card. And when you get enough to complete it, you're going to be able to, comp uh, to the, the right symbols. You can complete the case and you can get your victory points and potentially win the game. So let's take a look at some of those clue cards in depth. Um, on the top of the clue card, you'll have the symbols that you need. So lock, lollipop, dollar, cat. But there's also special abilities here. You can choose to use these cards as special abilities if you want. And on any of the ability, uh, any instance of an ability in this game, if you see a lightning bolt, that means you can use it at any time, even when it's not your turn. Otherwise, you have to use it on your turn. So for instance, the laptop here, if you choose to not use this as a clue and use it for its ability, you can prevent a detective from playing an um, area's ability. I'll get back to that in a moment. The lock, you can search the discard pile for a card and put it into your hand and then discard a card. You normally cannot search through the discard pile. Lollipop lets you look at the detective's uh, case and all stored clues. Those are just some examples. Now, also in the action card deck, you may find suspects. Suspects uh, are denoted by a little uh, picture of a man and woman up in the top, a little icon. Uh, these are cards that you can also play to try and foil the, uh, your detective opponents. Uh, so for instance, the boss here, it has, see, notice it has a lightning bolt, so you can play it out of turn. You can prevent an action from a card. So if someone tries to hit you with something nasty, you can prevent that. Smile here, um, simultaneously, all detectives give a card from their hands to the detective on their right if they have one. That has a dot, so it has to be on your turn. Now, Vinny here has a red blood spot. This denotes that this is a card that's going to deal damage to a detective. This one in particular, um, they're, they're called hit jobs. Uh, you can do a hit job at uh, the red district or the police headquarters. Detectives on this uh, area lose one life. So that's a good time for me to talk about the main board here. Uh, this is the central board of the game. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to have a token in whatever color they choose, however you want to choose it, and you're all going to start off at the police headquarters. Now, I'm going to go into this when I actually talk about the turn order and what you can do on your turn, but when you're at a location, you can use a special ability of it, like uh, the police headquarters lets you look at a player's hand, uh, downtown lets you draw a card from the action deck and then end your turn, the casino strip lets you steal a random card from a player's hand and then discard a card. And the red district has event cards. And event cards are another type of card that I haven't shown you quite yet. But um, whenever you do an event card, you just have to flip over the card and do what it says. So let's see if I can focus this a little bit and show you. Uh, so here you've got, uh, this one says lose two life. If you are not killed, draw two cards. If you die from this event, your opponents do not gain victory points. Usually if you accidentally or purposefully kill yourself, you don't gain any victory points, but your opponents do. Uh, here we have this card says that several cards equal to the number of detectives, uh, reveals cards equal to the number of detectives, starting with uh, each detective picks one in, starting with you, each detective picks one in turn order. So some of these can be good, some of them can be neutral, some of them can be very bad, hence is the nature of events. And the last little thing I'll explain as far as the components and setup, you have the victory point markers here, which you'll use to keep track as you uh, kill detectives and solve cases. And then of course the hit point markers as you take damage and potentially come closer to death. Now let me talk about how the actual turn orders are gonna work in this game. First thing you do on your turn is you can draw a card or you can store cards underneath your case. So remember that you need to store clue cards underneath your case to potentially solve it. But if you don't wanna do that right now, you can just draw action cards or draw an action card in order to hopefully get the clue that you need or a suspect card that will be useful. Next, you must move to a, a new area and you may play its ability there if you wish. So I could move from the police headquarters at the beginning of the game to the casino strip and try to steal a random card from a player's hand and then discard a card, or I can just go there and stay there and not do anything for that turn if that's more beneficial to me. Next, I can play as many cards as I want from my hand. These are suspect cards, or I can use the abilities of the clue cards, and so on. Alternatively, as I mentioned briefly in my intro, you can play this game as a two versus two game, a team game, if you want. And if that's the case, you can use this action to, instead of playing cards, you can actually swap cards with your teammate. The next thing you may do is discard two cards into the discard pile of the action pile. And if you do so, you will immediately heal one life. Remember that you only have four life in this game. So the more damage you take, the closer you are to utter defeat. So you may want to sacrifice two cards that would be otherwise beneficial just to gain a life back. 
And finally, at the end of your turn, if you happen to have more cards than four, you have to discard down to four, and then play is going to pass to the other player. That's a brief rundown of what's going to go down in Gomorrah downtown. You're going to take your turns, just as I described, in that order, and you're going to keep doing this until someone gets three victory points, either from solving cases by shoving clues underneath their cases, or by eliminating the other players and trying to get either enough victory points or by eliminating all players be the last man or woman left standing. Now let me go ahead and show you some of the expansion cards which are available for optional purchase as part of the Kickstarter. The expansion pack for Gamora is only $5 and it actually offers you 30 unique cards. Some of the cards, the ones that I have over here, are based on the uh, existing types of cards from the base set and they'll mix in very easily. So for instance, you have wild clue cards here which count as three different types of clues that you can use when you put them underneath a case. Um, all, all of them are gonna be different. Then you have new event cards that you can use. It'll shuffle right into the deck. You have new suspects, some very interesting ones here, like this uh, chainsaw guy. So just new suspects uh, you can put into the action card deck. But then you have a couple of new cards as well. One of them are backup cards, and there's no um, artwork for these ones yet. But the backup cards are interesting because they'll give you a one-time use special ability. And at the beginning of the game, you're going to take those cards the same way that you take the detective cards. You can either draft them, or you can just shuffle them up and deal them out randomly. But the end result will be that every detective, both your primary active detective and your backup detective, are going to start the game with one of these backup cards. You take the backup card, you slide underneath that character, and that is a, a one-time use special ability, in addition to their basic one-time use special ability that they can use during the course of the game. And the last type of cards are the witness cards. The witness cards go into the action card deck as well, and they function somewhat uh, just like the uh, suspect cards. However, what happens here is that when you use an ability of one of the suspect cards, so for instance, on um, this card here, it says reveal one of your stored clues and play its ability. Um, this one says uh, you can search the deck for a clue, reveal it, and store it and end your turn. Now those are all fine and they kind of work like suspect cards. The thing is, someone else can play a suspect card that's a hit job, one that deals a damage, or at least one damage, as a quick action, even though they normally wouldn't be able to, in order to kill one of your witnesses as you're playing it. So it's a beneficial ability, but someone else can counter it just to keep you from getting that ability. So that is just a general overview of both the base game and expansion of Gamora Downtown. Now, let's get to my final thoughts. Gamora Downtown is really going to appeal to people who like theme in their games, but not just that. People who like uh, sort of lighter games as well are really going to appreciate this one. And sometimes those two things are mutually exclusive. It can be tough to have a very uh, lightweight game have a very strong theme at the same time, but I believe that for a lot of people, Gamora is really going to fit into that niche. I mentioned in my intro that it has this really dark setting reminiscent of Sin City, and I think that's also going to appeal to a lot of people. It's brought out through the artwork and the aesthetics of the game. This sort of dark photorealistic um, type of graphic design really brings that theme to life. And speaking of the gameplay, while it is a lighter fare, it is still got enough strategy and um, complexity to it to give it enough bite for gamerly gamers, as I like to call it. You're going around to these different areas of the board, you have to figure out what's best for you in a particular given situation. There's also deep hand management involved where you have different um, suspects and witnesses. You have your own different character special abilities, some of which the traits are on all the time, but some of which are only one use per game. So you have to use those creatively and uh, with some strategy involved. And while you can technically take two hits to yourself, you can lose one of your detectives and have another one come out, you really don't want that to happen. You try to avoid that at all costs, especially since you're just giving another victory point to another player if they kill you. It's not just hurting you, it's also giving them a leg up on you. I, uh, you know, There's a card draft that you can optionally do in the beginning that um, gives you the option of selectively choosing the detectives that you want to play as, which is another bit of strategy that is optional in the game. While it does add some complexity, you don't have to do it. So again, there's a lot of different steps in this game that can be uh, very accessible to a wide variety of players. There is the expansion that I mentioned in my overview, and that's a pretty good value for what it is. It's only $5, but it gives you 30 more unique cards 
for you to play with. So all in all, this is a very accessible package for a lot of different types of gamers, especially people who like dark themes and light gameplay, something that you can play very quickly, but with enough of an edge to it. And if you're one of the people who are interested in Gamora Downtown, I'm gonna encourage you to go to the official Kickstarter project page. I'm gonna have a link right now at the bottom of your screen and down in the description section of the video, that will take you to the official Kickstarter project page. You can find out more information and hopefully consider backing the project. That is Gamora Downtown from Storyception Games. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.